If this went down, it would be a nightmare for NFL offenses. But I don't think there's one Ravens fan that would disagree with it happening. Team, keep it clean. Before we get into it, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Turn your notifications on so you don't miss a single video. Also, leave a like on the video. Click that thumbs up button. And let's get into it. Bleacher Report. They put out an article that said one trade each NFL team should consider before the 2024 season starts. And we are literally a couple days away from the first preseason game, the Hall of Fame game. But season is like right around the corner. But anyway, let's preface it with this. They said the dawn of NFL training camp is around the league. And it is also the last major catalyst for roster movement before the 2024 season gets underway. The vast majority of major moves were completed during free agency in the NFL draft. Still... There's nothing like the daunting task of trimming a roster down from 90 players to 53 to get some last-minute deals before the season. Oh, boy. That, that, don't that sound like EDC? Get some last-minute deals before the season? Y'all already know. But anyway, said trades around this time of the year are typically for a player who might have been released anyway. Other times, they are the resolution to a contract dispute. Here, we'll take a look at one hypothetical deal that will be worth exploring for all 32 franchises based on roster construction, need, and 2024 outlook. All right, so... We obviously don't care about the 31 other teams. We want to know who they suggested for the Baltimore Ravens who would wreak havoc. And that's none other than Hassan Reddick. Now, we know what Hassan Reddick did with the Eagles. He just killed it with them for years. But then he went to the Jets. And, and while he's been with the Jets, it's like, okay, that's a nice pickup for, for New York. But he's been holding out. Because he wants a new contract. But let's read what Bleacher Report had to say. It said, the Ravens would receive Edge Hassan Reddick. Productive, phenomenal, amazing player, in my opinion. It said, the Jets would receive a 2026 third round pick. Who, who would disagree with that? Please put in the comment section. If you agree, if you would be more than willing to send a 20, 2026 third round pick. So not even a, a third round pick for next draft, but in two drafts, two drafts away, a third round pick from two drafts away. I don't think there's going to be one person who would disagree with a move like that. If there is, please let me know. But anyway, continuing. So Jets will receive a 2026 third round pick. Says Hassan Reddick has already been traded this offseason, but his stay with the New York Jets has already been a mess. <laughs> The Jets sent a conditional 2026 third round pick to the Philadelphia Eagles for the pass rusher, but he is now holding out for a new contract. That's where things could get a little bit shaky with the Baltimore Ravens, but look, the way I look at it, you worry about that later. Anyway, continuing, says Connor Hughes of SNYTV reported that the Jets had talked with Reddick about a possible end season extension if they saw production in regular season games. Okay, I didn't know this part. So the Jets were like, look, we'll talk about a contract, but you got to show us you can produce. You got to show us that you are money. And then we'll talk about money. It says Reddick appeared to be on board with the plan per huge sources, but has apparently maintained minimal contact with the organization before deciding to hold out. Hughes also reported that the Jets are not willing to trade or release Reddick if this continues. So the Jets like, all right, you want to play hardball? We can play harder ball. Well, I know that don't really sound too good. But anyway, um, Continuing, it says, that may be what they're saying now, but it would be hard to pass if they were simply given an offer to recoup the 2026 third round pick that they lost in the trade. Yeah, so they could just wipe their hands with this whole thing. Be like, you know what, Hassan Reddick, we wanted you. We tried it. Didn't work. Let's just cut our losses now. And even though they wouldn't really be cutting losses because they would be getting everything that they lost right back if they traded them to the Ravens for a third round pick. But with that being said, the contract. The co he's in a dispute with the Jets right now because of a contract. He didn't get a contract extension, so he's holding out. So if he were to be traded to the Baltimore Ravens, hmm, would they sign him to that big contract extension? I don't think that they would right now. But one thing that they could do, they could adjust his salary for this year. And he could be a rent a 2026 third round pick. I ain't tripping if that's no rental, man. I'm really not because think about this. Say, for instance, you give up a 2026 third round pick. And then um, you, you give him a little raise for this year, but you don't sign him to a contract extension. Next year, he signs with somebody else. Okay, you get the third round pick back, especially if the deal is big enough, but you can get that back with the, um, what's not the supplemental draft, what's the, oh, I cannot, the comp pick. You can get that back with the comp, and it, will, it could be a third round pick, it could be a fourth round pick, but you can get that pick back. So I wouldn't be tripping over no 2026 third round pick for somebody that would possibly be a rental. But that's just me. Continue with the article. It says, as for the Ravens, Reddick would immediately become their most effective pass rusher. That's real. 
That's real. He he would be proven, consistent, productive, healthy, healthy. But continuing with the article, it says Reddick has had at least, at least eleven sacks in each of the last not one, not two, not even three, but eleven sacks in each of the last four seasons. That man, don't play with me, man. Anyway, it says Baltimore has Justin Matabike coming back after a breakout season, but Kyle Vinoy led all of their edge rushers in sacks last season. The same Kyle Vinoy they signed after week three. He led everybody, all of their edge guys in sacks last year. Now, shout out to Kyle Vinoy now. That ain't no shot at him. That's more praise for him, but it makes you look at the other pass rushers like, hey, what is going on? And like we've continued to say, I feel like the Baltimore Ravens, one of their biggest question marks right now, the receiver position, and we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Uh, an edge and offensive line offensive line seems like it's gonna work itself out and and hopefully the other positions do too but those are the three positions where they do have major question question marks at right now in my humble opinion and it also says this would give them the firepower up front to contend with the powerhouse offenses they will see in the afc playoffs they didn't even say regular season they jump straight to the player. They're like, oh, we know Ravens going to get there. So this is more firepower for Baltimore. Their pass rush, their edge, just getting after quarterbacks in the playoffs. I would love this move. Will it happen? Now, we talked about one disgruntled player that happens to be a pass rusher in the AFC that's not happy with his current situation. How about we talk about another that has been getting a lot of buzz, especially recently when he walked off from his head coach when they were having a little conversation. It didn't look too good. This was another article from Bleacher Report where it says hypothetical landing spots for Patriots star. Matthew Judon amid NFL contract standoff. Let's read the article. It says, while there has been no shortage of buzz surrounding the contract situation, the wide receiver CeeDee Lamb and Brandon Ayuk, Matthew Judon's contract standoff with the Patriots has largely flown under the radar. At least that was the case until Monday. The star pass rusher is entering the final year of his contract and wants a new deal. The four-time Pro Bowler did not participate in Monday's padded practice and in video captured by NBC Sports Boston, he appeared to exchange words with head coach Gerard Mayo before leaving the field. Uh, with New England probably, um, they don't want to actively shop arguably his best player. There have been reports that Judon won't play on his current deal in 2024, though he has pushed back on that idea. He said, I didn't say that at all. Don't let them make me the villain. He posted that on X on July 13th, so a couple of weeks ago. It uh, says, if the Patriots can't navigate the current impasse, though, they may have to consider a trade. So, blah, blah, blah. So, let's, let's get to the part about the Baltimore Ravens. What Bleacher Report had to say about the Baltimore Ravens being a possible landing spot for Matthew Judon. And, y'all, let me know in the comment section if you would love a reunion with Matthew Judon. Even though, what would his number be? Because the Dafia Way ain't giving up number 99. Matthew Judon had to get a fresh start. But let's continue. It says... Baltimore Ravens, they were named as a landing spot, a possible landing spot for Matt Judon. It says, admittedly, the Baltimore Ravens may be the least likely landing spot on this list due to financial reasons. And I know when it comes to money, that can make a lot of people's dreams become deferred. Not mine, though. Anyway, continuing, it says Judon will undoubtedly want a new long-term deal from his next team. And Baltimore has just 5.8 million cap space and is projected to be over the cap next offseason. I ain't know that. I ain't know they projected to be over the cap. <laughs> it's going to be a busy offseason like it normally is. I mean, last offseason was crazy busy. This offseason, ah, it wasn't as busy as it normally is. But if they projected to be over the cap next off, oh, <laughs> tough decisions, my friend. Anyway, continuing, it says, if Baltimore general manager Eric DaCosta can find a creative solution to the financial hurdle, though this could also be the most logical pairing. He can. If it, when there's a will... I be telling people this all the time, man, especially when it comes to NFL cap room. And all. if there's a will, there's a way every single time. If you really want to make it happen, you can make it happen. It says um, the Ravens are chasing a Super Bowl. They're ready to win now. And any steps they can take to get over the massive roadblock that is the Kansas City Chiefs would be beneficial. Now, something to think about. Um, I know we're talking about defensive players right now. Hassan Reddick, we're talking about Matt Judon. Um, but defense is actually not the issue when it comes to the Ravens against the Kansas City Chiefs or even the Ravens in the playoffs at all. It's been offense. It's been offense.
an offense. Whenever the Baltimore Ravens get to the playoffs, this powerful offense that they have all season long, this powerful roster, they be scoring all these points left and right, going crazy with it, it all comes crashing down in the playoffs. Baltimore Ravens need to figure that out. Now, I'm not opposed to making them the, the, the team even stronger, making the defense even stronger, but you got to remember the offense as well. Find out what is the issue. And, I mean, we know what the issue is. Baltimore Ravens getting away from themselves. Baltimore Ravens not sticking to their identity. Baltimore Ravens not being the team, not doing everything that they did in order to get to the position that they've been at in the playoffs. They throw everything out the window once they get there. They got to stop that. But back to us thinking about Matt Judon. It says uh, Matt Judon, who spent the first five years of his career in Baltimore, would be a boon. He's coming off a season-ending biceps tear, but produced an impressive 15 and a half sacks and 42 QB pressures with the Patriots the previous season. Baltimore lost his, 20, his top 2023 edge rusher, Jadavian Clowney, in free agency, and that one hurt my heart big time. It really did. Because y'all know, y'all, y'all already know what time it is with Jadavian Clowney. Anyway, it says, prying Judon away from the New England Patriots is exactly the sort of win-now move that the Costa should consider, even if it requires some bookkeeping gymnastics. So you got to do some stuff. You want to get Matt Judon? Okay, cool. But you really going to have to work for it. It says, while discussing the 31-year-old on our pre-camp trading block big board, we projected a trade value of a conditional third-round pick, likely one that could become a second-round selection if certain perimeters are met. So, again, not big on compensation. Now, with Matt Judon being 31 years old and coming off a season-ending biceps tear, I know that could raise some eyebrows, um, and that would be a concern. Would you want to give big money to Matt Judon with him being 31 and coming off of that injury? That could make teams very hesitant, and I could understand why. So, again, in my opinion, it's the same thing as Hassan Reddick. If I had to choose between the two, I think I would prefer Hassan Reddick, but um, I would do the same thing for both. You can't strike a long-term deal with them, get them a raise this year, and, and let everything work itself out. Says a sack artist such as Judon will be worth every bit of that to a team with Super Bowl aspirations like Baltimore. And again, something that I brought up before when we've discussed Matt Judon previously. Before he was under wing system that was not pass rush friendly, but now he will be under a system. Well, with Zach or system is to be determined, but we expect it to be very similar to Mike McDonald's system that is extremely pass rush friendly so he could eat. Now, some quick updates from Baltimore Ravens training camp today. Uh, Malik Ham, linebacker Malik Ham, they put him on injury reserve and they replaced him with outside linebacker Quincy Roche. And Kadir Ishmael, uh, who is Quadri Ishmael's son, undrafted rookie free agent, he is now listed as a tight end. So another position change for him. Uh, Ryan Mink highlighted that he was a college quarterback. And then a college wide receiver. And then when he got to the NFL, he started as a wide receiver. And now he's at tight end. So we'll see how that works out for him. Um, the Ravens, they, they talked about it a couple of weeks ago that they were going to be trying him out at tight end. And I see that they are officially going through with it. So we'll see how everything goes. And today the Baltimore Ravens were missing a trio of wide receivers. One being Rashad Bateman. They said he was dealing with soreness. Now I've seen the memes going crazy already. And then also uh, Devontae is walking. And Deontay Hardy, who Harbaugh also said was dealing with soreness as well. So hopefully they can get those guys back really soon. We got a question from my guy, Javo. Shout out to my guy, Javo. He said, how would you feel about bringing Matt Judon home? Well, we already took care of that. But there's another question. He said, how would you feel about getting another backup like a Tannehill or a proven vet to back up Lamar? Because I don't trust Josh Johnson and our rookie QB will probably be stashed. I have been saying this for the longest. I would love, love, love if the Baltimore Ravens signed Ryan Tannehill. Now, I would not expect him to get much playing time at all. Of course, if the Ravens want to blow somebody out, Lamar want to throw five touchdowns and then sit for the rest of the game, and Ravens got it handled, okay, cool. Ryan Tannehill, go do your thing. But I think Ryan Tannehill should be a Baltimore Raven. That would upgrade their backup QB situation so much. And right now, when you think about the backup QBs, you got a Josh Johnson, you got a Devin Leary, and you got a Emory Jones. So with that being said, what, like, why not? Why not upgrade the position, the backup QB position? Somebody who literally has experience in every, playing in every single type of game that there is except the Super Bowl. That's the only type of game Ryan Tannehill ain't played in. 
And then, I mean, if you want to, he could be another Malik Cunningham for you, somebody that could play quarterback and wide receiver. But no, you ain't going to mess with Ryan Tannehill and no wide receiver right now. Not at this point in his career. But he could certainly be a good backup quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. 